All right, so today I'm sitting here with Kristen Quaid from Leonard Hall Junior Naval Academy. She's the president of the board, newly the president of the board. And first, I'm just grateful for you to have us here. Thank you. It's nice for you to be here and have a chance to talk about the school. So Leonard Hall has gotten some publicity over the last couple of weeks, but take us back to the beginning of Leonard Hall. When did it start? What did it form as? What's kind of the history of the school? So it started out in 1909. It originally started as an agriculture school. They actually owned this property, the properties behind us, all the way down to where Riken is now. Oh, wow. That's a lot more than I thought. Yeah. Over time, you know, they sold pieces of the property off. They changed how they were running the school. The buildings behind us used to be actually dorms for students. It was an all boys school at first and then transitioned into a boys and girls school. It was a boarding school originally, but then they made it a daytime school when they brought the girls in. So from then, it was a military school and was owned by the brothers. Like the Bavarian yeah. brothers? Yeah. Same folks who own Reckon. Yes. After that, they sold it in 1970. 19- 74 to the county. Okay. And from that, that's when we started our agreement for rental with the county. So it's been a long time that we've actually had an agreement with them. It's been military instruction for many, many years, and that's how we continue to run it. Okay. Very cool. So just to address some of the recent publicity that has come to Leonard Hall, there was, of course, some talk of the school closing, of it moving, of it maybe staying here, but continuing to roll students. There's, I think, a lot of confusion, a lot of different communication being put back and forth. So with that being said, what's the situation right now? So currently we are sustaining here. We've met with the county. They've been very helpful. Mm -hmm. We've had all of the safety checks that we need to be able to operate in this property. At the moment, we're working on strategic roadmaps and putting together a plan for how we sustain in the future. So we're not saying that we won't be in this building. I think that was a misconception. That is an option, and that is the option that we would prefer. We will entertain other properties just because if we have a small class size, we have to be realistic. The school has a lot of history and has made a huge difference to so many people. We have tons of alumni and they're all very successful people and they say that this school helped shape them. So I want that to be around for students in the future, the students now. So we plan to be in business. If we have to move buildings, that's something that we'll figure out. But again, we want to pull all of our facts and resources together and kind of put it all out on the table, right? Because we also owe our parents that we have now a chance to have input into that. Because if we leave here, then we have a change in buses or how we operate in general. Kids will have a longer bus ride or a shorter bus ride. So those are all factors that have to be taken into consideration. The other thing that needs to be in consideration is the tuition and paying all of the bills. So that's all part of our budgeting and strategic roadmap. We have to really actually look into those things. And I think that maybe part of that was missing before. Okay. So in other words, it sounds like there's some challenges that still lay ahead in so far as understanding how exactly do you guys as an organization kind of move forward in regards to tuition, location, things of that nature. But overall, you guys can stay here for the time being from the county. And so there's not necessarily a big pressing reason. Now, maybe there's, you know, some updates that need to happen or things of that nature. And so that was one of the things that maybe spooked folks before, but those are being resolved. Yeah. So those updates, they weren't like they had to be done right away. Mm -hmm. It's general maintenance. And we entered into a contract that said that we would take care of general maintenance. So I think that there was some, again, misconception in regards to who does what and why and how it's done. They didn't say we had to do it by tomorrow. That very vaguely worded statement caused a lot of confusion. They are not saying that they're going to kick us out and not help us. And they are actually very concerned with making sure we can sustain, you know, whether it's here or somewhere else, they want us to be here. Well, I think everybody wants to see the school succeed. People from the county, the commissioners, you know, the folks that are here and everybody else in the community too, because the more school choice you have, generally speaking, the better it is for the students. And I think that's the thing that people care about the most. There's been probably a lot of folks who have reached out, who have been re-engaged. I know that at least on social media, there's been a big outpouring of concern for the school. What have you seen on your side? So I see that. I see a lot of people reaching out. We've gotten tons of phone calls from alumni, from families that their student went here and they just want to help and make sure that the school is successful. So I really think that that's something that we need to utilize and we intend to utilize that. We're actually working on some things to send out to our alumni to let them know what's going on, what's going on for the future, right? Like what is our plan forward so that we can get additional support and we can keep everyone engaged. I think that, like you said, not everybody was engaged. Sure. The community was disengaged because well, we were forgotten about. There wasn't good marketing or advertising. And I think that that's critical. That, you know, we live in Southern Maryland where there's bases all around us. We have families move into this area and would benefit.
benefit from their students going to school here. What's like one of the best ways that someone who is watching this, they're interested in helping, how can they help? We are working on some community letters and newsletters, alumni letters, basically so we can organize where we need help and actually put it out there where it's defined. So it sounds to me like if someone is interested in being involved, they want to see the school succeed, most important thing would just basically to reach out. Yeah. Because you guys could probably use some help financially in terms of just help. There's yeah. connections that everyone can benefit from. Many hands make light work, right? Yeah, that's very true. We're also working on setting up fundraisers. We're going to do a golf tournament. We have graduation coming up. We have one senior this year. So the things that the students had before or that they were looking forward to, I want to keep that in place. I want them to have everything that they had before, that experience. I have faith that we're going to be just fine. So we know that the school is a military school. People have different ideas as to what that means. What would you say like the average student is like? They're always very strong-willed, strong-minded, determined, and loyal. They're loyal to everything everyone in the school. Because it's a small class size and student body, everyone's family. And they're very protective and loyal and engaged with each other. They want to build each other up. They want to see everyone be successful. And that very important. That is something that we offer. We are different because we have the smaller class sizes. We can provide that one-on-one -on -one attention or lesson planning or help when the students need it. They're structured every day. They do military drill instruction every day. They wear their uniforms. They conduct themselves as you would see someone who's enlisted in the military. They take pride in their uniforms. They wear their uniforms properly every day. Even if they're out in public, they know how to present themselves, how to represent our school. So that's something that sets us aside from a public school with ROTC program and a private school that doesn't have military instruction. So for folks who maybe they look at the public schools, they look at some of the other independent schools in the area, and they're looking for something a little bit different, what are some of the values of Leonard Hall and what kind of of instruction can people expect when they send their children here? So I would say that our instruction is more like direct and seminar style at times based off of like the Navy leadership classes that we have. That's more seminar developed approach. We have Naval science class where they learn what it means to be out on a ship in the Navy or how things operate day to day. The classes function very similar to any other school. They come in, they have a morning muster. It's the same thing as the public schools going to a homeroom. In our morning muster, they get their tasking for the day. It allows them the time to be prepared for their day. Again, just like public schools, private schools, they go to class. They have their normal classes, normal instruction, which is very direct, right? It's teacher driven. You do what the teacher says. And then again, for the seminar portion, it's the leadership training that we do. So then what are the values of the school and what kind of values do you want to impart on the students? Honor, courage, loyalty, respect is what we live by. We breathe and live that every day. What we want them to learn really and truly is how to be leaders, how to deal with adversity. Everything's not going to be easy every day. They get to learn how to solve those things. They have the instruction on mitigating things, mitigating their communication. If it's not right or needs help, mitigate problem solving. You know, if they have a problem, we teach them how to mitigate the problem. We want for the students that come to the school while they're here, here, be confident. While they're outside of here, be confident. And that's something that we give them with our core values. What do you think are like the kind of the biggest problems or the biggest issues in society right now that you think that Leonard Hall solves? Dealing with adversity knowing respect. Being respectful is huge. Communication is huge. So I think that what we offer and what we teach them is how to deal with those things, how to use your manners, how to be respectful in society. So with military schools, I think there's probably some degree of stigma in so far as people have never been to a military school, but they watch videos or they watch movies rather. And they're like, oh my gosh, it's got to be like boot camp day in, day out. What's one thing that people would expect at a military school that isn't the case? We are structured. But there's no yelling in their faces or, you know, anything like that. And it's funny because my son is in his first year here. I didn't know what to expect. Sure. I was like, okay, this is, we're going to sink or swim here. I expected maybe more like a movie where they're like, you drop something and they're screaming at you. It's not like that. There is military instruction if you do something wrong. If you have bad behavior, yes, we have extra military instruction. But we always ask what's going on. You don't just have to do extra military instruction and then go on about your day and nobody hurt you. That's something that I think 
a lot of people think about. So that I think is what has happened with like the image of this school. Like it's just because we're not out there marketing and advertising. It's more of like, okay, my kid's not listening and they need to go to military school. Yeah, that's a very Hollywood-esque kind of thing. It's not going to be representative of Leonard Hall or any one particular school. It's just the cultural right. assumption. This is where we lay the foundation for successful adults to go into society. What do you think is one of the big highlights that students look forward to in the school year here? It's the students. It's the teachers. That bond that they have, that mm -hmm. family feeling, that's what they valued the most. 100%. Their hearts were all shattered. It had a very huge impact on them when the school shut down temporarily. I did not expect, like I said, my son's in sixth grade and as we were only halfway through the year and the impact that it even had on him and how united he felt with everyone that was here and how worried he was that he wouldn't see anyone again. Because we have kids that come from Calvert, PG, like they're not just St. Mary's County. So that bond that they have here is what they all look forward to the most. And same with the teachers. This experience, I would have told you confidence. They all get confident when they're here. Before this situation happened, that would have been my answer. Now it's the bond that everyone has here, the family that everyone has here. That's awesome. I think that people understanding that we're not doing this just because we want to be in the paper. We're doing this because we are dedicated. We want these students and the students that plan to return and the new students that are going to come to all have the opportunity to have what the students have now. That is so important. I mean, it's really hard for me to find a way to say that sometimes. And it's really hard for me to make assurances like, oh, we're going to be here for another 50 years, right? Sure. I intend for us to be here for forever, right? Somebody else is going to come along and run this place and it's going to be great. But there's a lot that's being worked out and I'm a very honest person. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to ever say anything that I can't uphold. That's something that's very important to me. What can you promise? We will be here. Whether we are in this building or we are somewhere else, we will be here. We will be around. We will continue. If we have to limp along and be a smaller student body size for two years to get everything straight, I'll do it. I'm so dedicated to this that I won't ever step away, even if my kid were to graduate and let this crumble. I don't ever want any of these students to ever go through that again, ever. Awesome. For any of the folks who are watching this, who are interested in learning more about Letter Hall, finding out how they can help, how can they get connected? So they have a website, lhjna.com. We have the Facebook page. They can go there. They can send an email. They can call. Any way that they are comfortable communicating, they are welcome to do so. Awesome. Well, thank you again for taking us through and really excited to have people learn more about the school. Me too. I'm very excited about that.